on the east side of Detroit this morning. It is extremely hot. We're gonna treat any call that comes in with an animal without shelter or water as a high priority call, just because we know that an animal lacking shade and water could possibly die in, in this weather. We are on our way to a call right now about a dog left at a property, um, I believe without utilities. The dog is kept in a closed garage and unsure if anyone's staying at the property. We have a history at this house. We've been there multiple times before, removed dogs before. Seems to just be a good spot for people to store dogs. There's a lot of overgrown uh, areas in the backyard. People put them in the garage, put them in the yard there, and no one really seems to see them. But luckily someone has called us on these, so we're gonna go check it out and see what's going on there today. Very short chain. You got any water out here? I hear you. You're okay. So this is kind of like a zero tolerance situation. He's actually getting a little bit of an embedded collar. All right, we're gonna take this guy. You have a chain that's cutting into a dog's neck. There's no tolerance. You, you buy a collar, you, you watch as the dog grows and adjust it accordingly. But once we start to see any kind of, um, any bit cutting into the neck, that dog's gonna come with us, so that's a 93 day misdemeanor. That's enough for us to get everyone out of the property, out of the yard, and taken him for evaluation. This dog has, while he has shade, he is in an area filled with debris. He has potentially dangerous glass, different objects, he has no water. His chain is at the point where just about short enough that he's gonna be unable to lay. He's been here, he's urinating, he's defecating up here. That bowl is dry as can be. I mean, he has nothing up here. It's sweltering. 85 degrees outside makes it pretty warm upstairs in a, in a non-ventilated garage, so. Hello, hello, it's not fun being up here. The dog does not need to be in this condition. So he's gonna go and so is our little black dog. We have a chain around the neck, cannot have that. It needs to be a collar, some kind of a non-choke nylon collar or a harness or something safer because obviously this we see gets coiled up, makes it shorter like this guy was tangled. It ends up embedding into their neck. It's extremely dangerous for the dog and just not something that we're gonna be okay with. Good boy. I mean, these guys had no water. The chains that they're on are literally from the dollar store. Leaving a dog in conditions like this with no ventilation, no water, that will prove fatal. It's just a matter of time. So we're not gonna let that happen to these guys. Okay, come on. You looking for somewhere cool to go? He is looking for food, looking for water. The other one laid in the grass to try to cool off. So while we're waiting, we're gonna get him in the truck where it's air conditioned, but I'm also gonna get him some water, first of all. Well, I think he's ready to go. What's this? Come here. I know, friend. I'd say he was pretty thirsty since he just destroyed my water bottle. So we ended up finding three dogs at the location. First we thought it was just one, and then we realized there was actually another one inside the garage, which one might think is a good solution, but that was actually, it was a lot warmer in the garage. So we're gonna leave a nice notice on this door, letting someone know, hey, if you want your dogs, we ended up bringing them in, feel free to call us and, and let us know that you're the owner. Um, that way, if, if someone does in fact claim these dogs and has had ownership of these dogs, we're gonna go ahead and submit charges to the Wayne County Prosecutor's Office um, in regards to the conditions that they were left in, particularly that embedded chain. And they won't be getting any of these animals back. A few days ago, it was a really rainy day. We found Pablo. We ended up removing him from the property. We had some concerns about his collar. He had absolutely no shelter to get to. We ended up getting contact pretty quickly from his owners. She was really interested in getting him back and wanted to know you know, what she needed to do to make that happen. We talked for a good amount of time about the conditions that he was in when we found him and how to prevent that in the future and why it's important to have shelter and to have a fitting collar and things like that. She got him neutered, which she was excited about doing. She paid for his care while we had him and she ended up getting him back home and we got him fitted for a new collar, which was awesome. So we are on our way now to go check on Pablo and see how he's doing. 
and to bring him a dog house. When we did, when we first came out, obviously he, it happened to be raining that day right. and that was kind of just like a, right. looked over, forgot to stick him back in the house that day. Exactly. I had left early and went to work and told my boys to let him in. They forgot and went to school. And then once we brought him in, we were able to talk to you and find out he had a really great home. It was just an issue with getting him to sit still and not mess up a doghouse because yes. I know you had the one right, yes. that he had pretty much just kind of torn <laughs> up and up. had nothing to do with. So the barrels we do recommend as shelter. These are pretty cheap. You can get them. How much did you end up paying? Seven bucks to pick this up from a uh, from a car wash. Usually anywhere from five or ten bucks. And this is literally just a big plastic drum that they use to keep the soap in at the car wash. So we just recommend if people want to grab this from a um, car wash, you can drill it to. Uh, pallet, which I think they're going to end up doing in Pablo's case because he's playing with it and rolling it around. We just left Pablo's house and we actually still have our dog house because Miss Graham took the initiative to go ahead and get a dog house herself. We can save this dog house for somebody who really needs it. I mean, ultimately she wants him in the house, but when he does go out to use the bathroom and to play, she doesn't want him on a tether. So she's actually getting a privacy fence put up so that he can safely be confined in the yard and have some more time to run because he's obviously a very high energy dog. It's not every day that, you know, people take the initiative and go the extra step on their own. Sometimes there's a little more encouragement needed from us. So when we pulled up and she said, nope, don't worry about the doghouse. We actually got our own. It was pretty cool. It reassured me that we made the right decision in getting Pablo back home. At the end of the day, we want to keep animals in homes. So I think this was one of those situations where it was a win-win for the dog, for the family, for us. He got to go home, he got neutered, and he's got everything he needs, and his mom's so happy.